Hey, what's up guys? I'm in Boston right now. This is the last show on a two week run with Elevation. I'm out here teching with them and helping build a riser every day, but I kind of wanted to run you through my tech station. I've had a few questions on Instagram as I post different things over there about my setup and why I do different things. And I will say that the setup is, you know, a little different um, and this setup is gonna vary depending on who I'm working with because most bands have their own guitar vaults. They have, you know, work boxes and different stations and stuff. So I actually flew out here with a Pelican with my tools and I'm combining that with the stuff that they already have. Sometimes that works out great. Sometimes Sometimes you discover you need some things that they don't have, um, but you know, you make do. Um, generally speaking, I'm just doing kind of general maintenance and string changes and all that, but let's take a look at the workbox. Here's my station. Typically I'm set up stage right. Right now we're having to wait um, for the, everything to be built over there, and then we actually roll this stage in place, which is nice. Hey buddy. Hey. The thing that I get the most questions about whenever I have posted pictures about my work box or when people come up to me is three tuners. Right now I'm using the Peterson Strobo Stomp, the Boss TU3, and then this Diodario. Um, typically, most of the time I'm just using these two, but this was in the work box and I decided to throw it on there. Um, the reason for that is, especially with acoustics, um, a lot of times, you know, if the band is playing and I am tuning a guitar, getting it ready to go on stage, tuners will read differently better or worse um, with a lot of ambient noise on acoustic guitars you know their pickups or just even the body will resonate with certain frequencies and so i find that i like the accuracy of the peterson but the boss reads a lot better in noisy environments um, it maybe is not quite as accurate as the peterson but it does a much better job of getting me in tune uh, in that that kind of situation. And then this Diodario, actually, I like it pretty well too. Um, it seems like it's not quite as accurate. You know, it turns green uh, a lot quicker than the other ones, but it reads incredibly well. So I, I find, you know, if I work my way left to right, like if I'm green here, then I can fine tune with this and then get it even closer with that, depending on how much time I have. I don't always have time to, you know, really get things as as perfect with the strobe as i would like you know depending on how fast the change is but you know that's kind of that's kind of how it goes another tuner i actually have here is this clip-on peterson i love these things um it's it's great and the reason why i have this is because a lot of times um you know you like i can't be at my station there's one point in the show where I actually hand deliver a guitar to stage left. And so I always clip that on the guitar, check the tuning before I hand it off on that side. So that makes it really easy to do that. And I can make sure that when I hand a guitar to an artist that it is in tune. Let's take a look in this work box. It's a bit of a mess. It was kind of a mess when I got here, but it's my top drawer, you know, just batteries and Sharpies, my extra ears or strap locks, polishing cloth, picks, you know, um, oh, we did have um, on a Gretsch, we had this um, barrel jack go out. Actually, it wasn't this one, it was another one. We had to try two or three to find one that would actually work, but um, I brought my soldering, you know, soldering kit and everything, so we were able to fix that right up. Here we've got extra cables and more picks. This is a string drawer, gaff tape, huge bass strings. Um, on the acoustics now, we're using 12s on everything. Joey uses 10s on everything, uh, electric-wise. And then E uses 10s on his Tone Master, which is a half step down, and then uses 9s on both of his. I think it's the Warhawk. They're both Elliot's. And then bottom drawer, just more cables. Uh, e keeps his like small stuff in there. Just kind of extra stuff. I think there's extra IEC in there and different different parts and everything. Honestly, this first drawer is is where I keep you know most of the stuff that I use if it doesn't live here on top. Um, this is a little you know neck rest. This one has a built-in neck rest, but I don't really like it. Um, it's just not very stable. So this is one that I brought that I taped. Um, here are the different picks. This is Brandon's picks and Chris's picks. I just keep them there so I can keep them straight. And, and then when I hand off a guitar to them, I always have a pick with me that I can hand them if they need it. I made this little guy for my cable. Little workaround. 
white. It's a cloth I use for the, the, um, the F1 oil on the fretboards and different colored gaff tape for labeling stuff. As far as typical maintenance that I do out here on the road, most of the time it's just string changes. Every few changes I might, you know, um, on the rosewood fretboards use, um, you know, some oil. I use this um, right here, this F1 oil from Music Nomad. I really like their stuff. And this just kind of conditions the fretboard. I might hit it really lightly with some steel wool just to knock the gunk off the fretboard and off the frets. Um, you don't want to do that on a maple fretboard. Um, but for rosewood, using this oil and kind of hitting it lightly with some steel wool works great. Um, and I find that everybody that I do that for, they really like how it feels and everything. You don't want to really dig in with the steel wool because it, you know, it will take, uh, take some off the fretboard, especially over time. Um, so I'm not doing that every time, but it is nice just to kind of get the gunk off. You can also use a toothbrush just to kind of scrub gunk that builds up on the fretboard off. For string changes, the biggest thing that is a game changer for me is something I've actually talked about before on the channel, and it's this right here. Um, it's called the Stretcha, but basically you just, uh, I have to say it like that because I'm in Boston, I guess, but the string basically goes through here after you put it on the guitar and you can just pull the strings and stretch it with this rather than doing it with your hand. Um, I find if I stretch them out really good and tune, tune everything up that um, they stay really well and pretty quickly. You know, you don't have to wait for them to settle in as much. They they get in tune and stay in tune a lot quicker. They don't have a place to put all their water bottles. That's Michael's job, not your. Yesterday, we were having an issue with one of the guitars. Um, it was kind of getting some fret buzz, the high E string in particular on um, E. Edwards. Tone Master was, it almost sounded sitari is what I always think of it. Um, and then uh, come to find out, uh, you know, he's been running that guitar a half step down and it never was really set up for half step. And I guess traveling and everything, it kind of settled in. So I had to make a tress rod adjustment on that, you know, just to... All right, we're moving the stage in 15 minutes. Um, uh, yeah, this is my radio. This is how we kind of all communicate and figure out things together. Um, so I was talking about the truss rod adjustment on E's guitar. Quarter turn on that, kind of got it back into shape. I ended up having to change that high E string out a couple times. I don't know if it was a bad string, but it just um, was being super weird. And, and sometimes you just have issues that pop up and maybe you don't necessarily have the right tools to do it or or for me, you know, there's just some things that I don't know how to do or I don't want to really tackle out here on the road. Other than just kind of keeping strings fresh, um, other things I've had to do out here are just troubleshoot a few things, you know, if something's not working. Um, we rerouted some stuff on the bass player's pedal board to kind of clean it up and um, cut down on the number of power supplies he was using. He was using an external power supply. And, um, you know, so I took a look at that and, and kind of cleaned it up for him. I find that being out here and just being really knowledgeable about all kinds of gear is super helpful because, um, you know, situations like that where he's just not really sure how things work or, or the best way to do things, um, you know, I really enjoy being able to come into that situation and be like, well, let's try this. I think you might like this better. Um, and, you know, most of the time they do. Um, we also had another scenario on one of the acoustics where they were using a lighter gauge string. They had 11s on a Martin, I believe it's a triple O, and it was just kind of sounding thinner. It wasn't staying in tune super well, especially um, during the set when they were putting on a capo. And I suggested, you know, trying some heavier strings. It might might help the guitar stay in tune better, but also sound a little fuller. And, and so we did that and, and that, that was um, well liked at front of house as well with the artist. So, um, you know, it's just little things like that, just kind of trying to think, think about things, think ahead, think what, um, what can be better and how to make things better, but also be aware that the players and the artist, they have their preferences and they have things that they like. And so you want to be sensitive to that and not just change things without asking or, um, you know, push them into doing something that they maybe don't want to do. Here's the Pelican that I flew here with. I've just got, you know, these bags with different tools and stuff in it. Um, you know, there's part of my soldering gun. I threw an extra volume pedal in here because volume pedals always break. And then I also have the Iridium in here just as a way to test things or if I want to hear something at my station or if I just want to play. Um, this is the Pinstripe uh, Deso Plus that I threw in here just in case. Uh, we had to use the Iridium and plug it in. I, I love that thing and it sounds incredible.
I think that's gonna do it for this. Um, if you guys have any questions, definitely leave me a comment below. I'll also link some of the stuff that I mentioned. Um, you know, some of the things that I like to use that work really well for me down below. Those are Amazon affiliate links, um, you know, buying something from there, checking it out definitely helps support the channel. So uh, if there's something that you think you might use or need, check it out. All right. As always, thank you for watching. And until next time, I'll see you out there.